Hi everyone, it is B. How are you? Uh, we are having another fireside chat and we are of course in front of the fireplace while it's still cold up here. And um, I did have a subscriber mention that they wanted me to go live with the fireside chat and to also drink whatever drink it is that we feel like we wanna drink at that particular moment in time. And for tonight, since I am around friends and I am celebrating friendship and family with all of you, I am actually having a glass of wine. <laughs> so in this particular case, um, I am drinking Whitehaven and it is from New Zealand. Love New Zealand, love Australia. I swear I'm gonna go there someday. I just absolutely love it. And I think I wrote a paper about it when I was like, I don't know, in high school or something for a geography class. And um, it is a Sauvignon Blanc. Now it has beautiful notes of grapefruit and it's got that fruity uh, tart type of uh, feel to it, texture to it, whatever you wanna call it, taste to it. And um, I'm, I'm by no means am I a sommelier, but um, I know a good wine when I have it and um, it's really excellent. So for those of you that like Sauvignon Blancs from New Zealand, um, absolutely uh, take a check on the um, Whitehaven from New Zealand, Sauvignon Blanc. I think you really like it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get right into it. Um, do I wanna go live? Yes, I wanna go live. Okay, but here's the problem. I am so freaking busy and everything I have, everything I do is like literally scheduled in my life. Like I have to go by a schedule. If somebody tells me that I need you to do this and you're going to have to do it at this time and I change my schedule for that, it has to happen within that time or I am just not going to have time. Okay. Sometimes I can be spontaneous, but it's rare. Okay. So I really appreciate people in my life who are extremely uh, scheduled. So let's talk about this. Going live. I know many of you have said that you want me to go live, chat, drink wine, drink whatever you want. Just have one-on-one, -on -one, just have communion with one another. Um, talk about events, talk about the astrology, talk about whatever we want to talk about. Uh, I absolutely can do that, but I need your help. Uh, I am your typical uh, Gemini rising, which needs to beta test everything. And I don't like putting stuff out there without knowing that it's going to be successful. <laughs> so what I'm asking for some of you to do is if you could put in the comments below or you can even email me if you want um, specific directions on ex exact steps on how to go live and do it successfully. If you could do that for me, I would appreciate it so much and I would send you several blessings. I send all of you blessings, but special blessings to those that will help me to understand and successfully deploy going live with my uh, particular YouTube channel. So I would really appreciate that. I uh, would like to grow the channel and I know live is something that a lot of people look forward to. And it's a lot, um, it's, it's a lot more interesting sometimes than just me talking to you. We have interaction, which is really, really nice. So um, enough of all of that. We're gonna get right into Saturn entering. Aquarius. Now, I will go back and forth. I uh, just want to let everybody know as well, I am going to get into the individual signs, how you're going to be affected. And I'm going to pull from the major arcana. Now, let me explain how this works. Sometimes when we have a major shift like this, when we have a shift such as uh, Saturn, one of the larger planets of our solar system, and the strictest and the most regimented, going into another sign, the ingress can be extremely taxing on some people and even jolting for some people. And when we do this, because it is such an expansive planet and because it is such a demanding planet, we generally relate those type of movements to big shifts in our life, huge shifts, faded shifts. And those faded shifts can be known and can be illuminated through the major arcana 
in the tarot deck. So for each of the signs, not only am I going to give you your area of focus where Saturn is located, but I am also going to pull a major arcana card for each of you to give you an idea of how you need to handle the energy or what types of situations you're going to be dealing with as it ingresses into Saturn or in, ingresses into Aquarius. Now, as we do this, we're also going to be looking at how, okay, Saturn going into Aquarius is going to affect those people that have specific planets in specific houses. This is the sun. This is the moon. This is Venus. This is Jupiter. All right. So be aware of that. Uh, as we move forward, we are going to find out a little bit more of what we are dealing with as it relates to what type of accountability we're going to be dealing with. Because I will tell everyone right now, Saturn in Aquarius, while it is fan-freaking-tastic, it is demanding. And we will get into that. So let's get into it right now. Things are going to brighten up just a little bit. Here we are. So Saturn is entering Aquarius on March 21st of 2020. Saturn will enter its air counterpart on March 21st of 2020. Saturn rules both Aquarius and Capricorn, for those of you that didn't know. Whereas Saturn is surrounded by structure, hierarchy, status, and money in Capricorn, it redirects its distribution of information, dedicated development of new innovations, breaking the status quo, and detachment of emotions in Aquarius. The last time Saturn was in Aquarius was in 1994. Where were you at this time? What was going on? What happened in 1994 may give you an idea of what Saturn would like to reintroduce in your life to complete whatever lesson Saturn is trying to treat you or teach you. Treat you? Interesting. Treats. Maybe Saturn is bringing some treats for uh, some people out there. In the world in 1994, the following high profile things were happening. This is just to give you guys an example of um, like what was what was happening at this time. So very interesting. Do you remember? <laughs> Tanya Harding wins the National Figure Skating Championship title, but is stripped of her title following an attack on her rival, Nancy Kerrigan. Number two, South Africa holds its first multiracial elections after the end of apartheid. Number three, first genetically engineered tomatoes available. Use of GM foods in the US is approved. Number four, the Northridge earthquake, a magnitude of 6.7 hits the San Fernando Valley of Los Angeles. Number five, Sweden and Norway vote on whether or not to join the European Union. Number six, O.J. Simpson flees police in his white Ford Bronco. Number seven, Orange County, California files for bankruptcy protection. Number eight, the Xiangxiu suspension bridge over the Han River in Seoul collapses, killing two or 32. Number nine, the Whitewater scandal of President Clinton begins. Number 10, the North American Free Trade Agreement, making the largest trade bloc of countries in the world, United States, Canada, and Mexico, which is a complete debacle, my opinion, but it needs to be scrapped. Number 11, and thank goodness it is. Number 11, a new outbreak of the deadly Ebola virus begins on May 9th in Zaire. Zaire. Think about it. In 1994, that happened on May 9th. Interesting, isn't it? Number 12, Lisa Marie Presley marries Michael Jackson. Thriller. <laughs> I love Michael Jackson. He's fabulous. Was fabulous, is fabulous. May he rest in peace. 
Number 13, Kurt Cobain commits suicide. Number 14, Forrest Gump is released. How many of us know exactly what we were doing at the time that Forrest Gump was released? Number 15, the world's first satellite digital television service is launched. Number 16, Netscape Navigator released quickly becoming market leader for browsing the web. Number 17, Java programming language first released from Sun Microsystems. Now let's think about this. These are just a few. It's not all of them. They're just a few. Think about Aquarius and think about thinking outside the box. Think about, we'll get into it. All right, we'll get into it. So what are the main themes of the move of Saturn into Aquarius? Karma for the collective, new technologies, strange out of the box developments and significant pressure on those who cannot think for themselves. So what should we do? Great question. And B may possibly have an answer for you. So here's a little bit of advice for Saturn entering Aquarius. Maintain your individuality and do not let the collective or the mob tell you what you should think or do. Many times when Saturn enters Aquarius, the mob will, or the collective, will tell you what you should be thinking. You should do this. You should do that. You don't want to do that. That's just dumb. You need to, you need to do this. You need to put more effort over here. No, no, and double no. Do not let the mob tell you what you should think or what you should do. You always must maintain your individuality. Number two, ensure that people are treated as fairly as possible, regardless if you're dealing with idiots, if you're dealing with stupid people or stupid moments, uh, idiotic moments, if you're dealing with um, people that are not using their brain or they're not making sense, still treat them as fairly as possible. And when I say fairly, pummel them with the truth and facts. They will not be able to deny it. In fact, they will cower in the face of the truth. Number three, do not be optimistic that you will get away with bad behavior as karma will likely be immediate and cruel. It will, if, if you're going to go, if you're going to move into bad behavior, if you're going to get conceited, if you're going to get, oh, I don't need to do that. Oh, they're always going to be there. Oh, they're, you know, they, They'll bend over backwards for me anyway. No, uh, uh not likely. Not with Saturn in Aquarius. Because that bad behavior, karma will be immediate and cruel. It will put you through the ringer because you feel like you've lost a level of stability in your life. Number four, if you have an idea that may be out of the blue or out of the box, don't deny the possibility of a great idea and success. This is great energy for researchers. Wow, researchers are really amping up right now. Just letting you know, man, they're like they're like rocket boosters underneath their freaking cabooses right now. Number five, being overly emotional will be met with resistance. Now, the thing about it is you need to take, many of us need to take a feather out of the cap of Aquarians and Geminis because they are the least emotional of any sign. They do love and they do love very deeply, but they are not overly emotional for the most part, unless they've got a lot of water and, you know, drama energy, but normally they are not overly emotional. They look at things very realistically, very rationally. They question what they're being told. They desire the truth. They will dig until they get it. In this particular case, Geminis and Aquarians are very much like Scorpios in that instance. Uh, but Scorpios generally, they don't necessarily want to know the truth. 
They just want to know what the skinny is, right? Like what the gossip is, what's going on, what's, what's the pulse. Geminis and Aquariuses want the truth. Now, I'm not saying Scorpios don't want the truth. But I'm saying that this is where the digging of the truth comes in and where the truth is revealed. You cannot hide when Saturn is in Aquarius because the desire for the truth overrides emotion. So people are not going to be triggered. This is one of the most beautiful things about Saturn in Aquarius. People will not be triggered. They're going to say, okay, whatever. Have a nice day. That's it. Number six, try your hardest not to introduce drama into friend networks and work groups. Drama will not be met with great support. Okay. Now, unless your group is just drama filled and then you can just live on your own little island, that's perfectly fine. But Try not to do that because there are more people around these groups now that are demanding the truth than there were in the past. So just be aware of that. You must be, number seven, you must be accountable or be held accountable. When Saturn enters Aquarius, accountability is very significant regarding whatever action you're taking. Because of the removal of the emotion People are expecting rational behavior from other people. So where you are irrational, it will not compute. So please be aware of that. Number eight, if you feel like a group of people are damaging your sanity or your health, get out. Better yet, do not join this group to begin with. As we have Saturn moving from Capricorn into Aquarius, the one negative aspect of Saturn in Capricorn and in Aquarius is that people stay in groups that do not serve them. They stay in groups that literally destroy their futures. It is more important than ever to think for yourself, damn the torpedoes, do what you need to do to keep your integrity intact with your people you love, your family, your goals for yourself, your vision for the future, and what you've committed to up to this point. People who have Saturn in the early degrees, zero to five degrees, of Leo, Taurus, Scorpio, and Aquarius will feel a bit of a zap here. This energy will specifically involve the requirement of stability, responsibility, and as stated, accountability. The phrase I keep hearing here is, snap out of it, what are you doing? Do not sabotage what, sabotage what you have for a foolish moment. And I'm telling you, it is a moment. Am I getting intense? Absolutely, because I'm channeling Saturn right now. All right. Snap out of it. What are you doing? Do not sabotage what you have for a foolish moment. And again, I mean a moment. This could be 10 minutes of your time. And then you turn around and your whole, this, this whole area of your life is gone because you were paying attention to something you shouldn't have been paying attention to. Period. Watch your P's and Q's, ladies and gentlemen. Now for others who are abiding by that and they know where they're integrity is, they know where their love is, they know where they should be putting their energy. For others, I am hearing if you build it, they will be bedazzled by its simplicity, structure, and effectiveness, a true innovator, a true genius. Honestly, this could be in any area of your life, but let's see what this means for the rising Jupiter, Venus, Sun, and or Moon signs that I am about to mention here. I will also pull a major arcana card for each of the signs. Let's get these out. Here they are. To show what it is you may be focused on and what you should address in your affected houses that are indicated. Now, as I do this, um, I will put timestamps. Uh, this is gonna take a little bit of time. 
but I will put timestamps below. Um, for some reason, I'm also hearing, I'm, I'm hearing, okay. Um, okay, I have to say this, and it is a bit of housekeeping, but I don't know why I want to say this, but I generally don't have a big problem with this. But anybody, um, like, uh, what do they call them, trolls? Like, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it at all. All right. I don't know why that's coming up. And some of you might want to say that to somebody or you might want to say that or somebody might want to say that to you. I don't think those of you watching this channel have people wanting. I have people that want to say that to you. I think it's more of you wanting to say that to other people. All right. But I don't know why it came up. It just like, you know, and, and for an example, um, if I do have uh, people that are negative, that do not um appreciate the content, that do not appreciate the time that this family, this group gets together to commune with one another and to create a spiritual bond with one another and to do their best to be the best that they can be in whatever it is that they choose to do, you're out. See ya. I do not allow negative people on this channel. You, you have any negative comment, I will delete it. I absolutely will. And I do read every single comment. Absolutely. I just, I cannot reply to all of them, but I read every single one. And when I do reply, my replies are very heartfelt and they're also um, very appropriate for what I'm being called to respond on. Sometimes when I respond to people's comments, I am actually guided to give them advice through universe, through God, through Allah, through whatever, okay? As long as it is coming from the light. It is not the dark side of any of these deities. It is the light side, okay? So just be aware of that. Some of you may not want to call it dark. Maybe you want to call it evil or negative, okay? I'm coming from the positive, from the help, from the advice. That's, I don't know why I need to say that, but I'm saying it. All right, we're going to get right into it, guys. So we're going to pull all of these major arcanas as it relates to this. So let's get into it. We are starting out with, as always, the beautiful Capricorns. Oh my gosh, I love my Capricorns. My dad's a Capricorn. I am a Jupiter in Capricorn, so I'm just like a Capricorn. Um, and a lot of times people think, <laughs> they think I'm a Capricorn, but they can't quite place it. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's me in a nutshell. Um, interesting to figure out, right? So Capricorns, for you, this will require accountability, out-of-the-box thinking, networking, and control of over-emotionalism regarding a Taurus person, a sun, moon, rising, Jupiter, or Venus in Taurus person, or your second house um, elements. You or the company you work for uh, will be specifically affected in the areas of self-value, possessions, the money you make from the company you work for, or the business you own. For health, you will have to be accountable regarding second house of Taurus, which rules the throat, the ears, the mouth, the neck, the vocal cords, and the teeth. All right, Capricorn, what is your major arcana for Saturn entering Aquarius in your second house. What is it? Cutting the deck. There's only 22 cards here. Judgment. Capricorns, you are going through a phase of karmic return. What have you put out there? Have you been honest? Have you been truthful? Have you been kind? I am hearing Capricorns, have you hid anything from anybody else? Have you thrown out a red herring so that you could get what you want while other people suffer? It is judgment day for the Capricorns. If you have been in your integrity as best you can, we all make mistakes, I get it then you will be basically rejuvenated, 
reinvigorated. You are the phoenix rising from the ashes as it relates to judgment. But again, when Saturn enters Aquarius, it is immediate karma. And be careful. Mind your P's and your Q's, Capricorn. You will be immediately called on the carpet for what you do. If you are not in your integrity, if you are slacking, if you are not keeping a foundation strong, be aware of that. All right. Aquarius, for you, this will require accountability and out-of-the-box thinking, uh, networking, and control of over-emotionalism regarding an Aries person. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Jupiter, or Venus, or first house matters. You will be specifically affected in, in an area or your own identity and what you want to see within yourself so that you can shine brightly to the outside world. Health and your physical body will be a focus for you as well. For health, the first house of Aries rules the head, the eyes, the face, and the brain. Right, Aquarius, what is your major arcana for Saturn entering Aquarius? Cutting the deck, you have the Hierophant. So as it relates to the Hierophant, Aquarius, you might be dealing with a Taurus person, Sun, Moon, Rising, Jupiter, or Venus. So in addition to an Aries person, this also, Aquarius, may be for you that um, it's time to make a commitment. It's time to abide by, or you may be having difficulty abiding by the um, structures of the hierarchy with how you want to operate in your own personal life. So Aquarius, the Hierophant, in some cases for you, will require you to toe the line. This happens when Saturn enters your first house. You are going to have to toe the line here. You are going to have to be accountable to hierarchies. You are going to have to be accountable to your bosses. You are going to have to be accountable to yourself, what you promised yourself, what you promised others. There could be something specifically related to religion here. Um, there could be something related to pragmatism. There could be something related to, for some of you Aquariuses, uh, this could even be your home, uh, the keys to your home, the keys to your heart even, marriage possibly for some of you. There's going to be a lot of accountability. There's going to be a lot of um, control that is needed regarding over-emotionalism, whether that's you or someone else. Wow, Aquarius. Good times, good times. Pisces, for you, this will require accountability and out-of-the-box thinking, networking, and control of over-emotionalism regarding a Pisces person, or even yourself, as you are the ruler of the 12th house. This could be a Pisces sun, moon, rising, Jupiter, or Venus. You will be specifically affected in the areas of conscious, subconscious, hospitals, healing, research, the past, the hidden, and even romance. At this time, with Saturn in its sign of Aquarius, which he rules, your psychic abilities will be off the charts. For health, the 12th house of Pisces rules the feet, lymphatic system, and the immune system. So what is your overall... Major arcana energy that you have to pay attention to relative to Saturn entering Aquarius in this area. What have we got? Pisces. Cutting the deck. We have the Hierophant as well. Pisces, you are going to have to dedicate yourself to something. You are going to have to be part of a hierarchy. You are going to have to be part of um, some sort of Needing to go through the chain of command is what I'm hearing for some of you Pisces out there. You may be part of that chain of command. For some of you Pisces, you are going to be put in a leadership position, whether spiritual or whether at work and um, or in the family. And you are going to have to guide people to the right direction or give them uh, the information that they need in order for them 
to determine whether or not they want to go left or right. For some of you Pisces out there, this is also the keys, meaning you have the keys to someone's house, someone has the keys to your house. That could be, you could be the key to a situation. You might be the missing link Pisces. So be aware of this energy. A Taurus person could be of great significance in your life as well. You may also have uh, Taurus um, in your chart. Aries, for you, this will require accountability, out-of-the-box thinking, networking, and control of over-emotionalism regarding an Aquarius person. Sun, Moon, Rising, Jupiter, or Venus, or the 11th house energies. You will be specifically affected in the areas of hopes, wishes, dreams, goals, networks, and associations regarding the energy Saturn brings with it in Aquarius. For health, the 11th house of Aquarius rules calves, ankles, veins, and the circulatory system. Aries, what is your major arcana energy that Saturn is bringing with it into this new endeavor in Aquarius? Cutting the deck, you have the world. Aries, for you, something, you need to complete something. Something needs to be completed. Whether this is a project, whether this is a relationship, whether this is coming full circle and reintroducing a new beginning in your life as you close out an old chapter, this is absolutely coming up here. Aries, for some of you out there, you may need to sequester yourself from outside influence. You need to be able to look at yourself and say, where is it that I want to be vulnerable in my life? Okay, for some of you Aries out there, your focus is going to be on world travel as well. So please be aware of this energy. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. The fixed signs, Aries, are likely going to be affecting you greatly as well. So what are the fixed signs? The fixed signs are Aquarius, uh, they are Scorpio, they are Taurus, and they are Leo. So please be aware of that. Taurus, for you, this will require accountability, out-of-the-box thinking, networking, and control of over-emotionalism regarding a Capricorn person. Sun, moon, rising, Jupiter, or Venus. Or the 10th house of status and career. For health, the 10th house of Capricorn rules knees, ligaments, tendons, nails, skin, and the skeletal system. Please make sure that you are taking care of these uh, particular areas of your body, Taurus. So let's see what's going on as it relates to your major arcana energy, Taurus. What is your major arcana energy? Cutting the deck, you have the tower. Taurus, it's very important for you to get rid of things that you do not need. Things that are built on a faulty foundation. Things that no longer serve you maybe in your status and in your career. There could be major uh, revelations. There could also be major uh, reorganizations of your career and of your business. So please be aware that you have massive changes coming up here, Taurus. You may be throwing some people out of your life that no longer serve you. Taurus, you may know people that are absolutely going through a massive purging of what no longer serves them. Also, Taurus, you may be getting rid of things out of your life that are affecting your health negatively and you are deciding enough is enough. I'm gonna be healthier, I'm gonna be smarter, and I'm gonna be more aware of my surroundings. So this is what is coming up for some of the Tauruses out there. Wow, Taurus, it's what you got to look forward to. Gemini. And with Gemini, I'm going to take another drink of wine. You understand, Gemini. Not all Geminis, but some. For you, this will require accountability, out-of-the-box thinking, networking, and control of over-emotionalism regarding a Sagittarius person. Sun, moon, rising, Jupiter, or Venus, or ninth house matters of travel, foreign people, foreign lands, legal law, people, politics, higher education, or the occult. For health, the ninth house of a Sagittarius rules thighs, 
hips, the sciatic nerve, motor nerves, and the muscular systems. So Gemini, what have we got going on with you as it relates to your major arcana energy? Gemini, Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, or Jupiter? What do we got? Gemini. What is the major arcana energy for the Geminis? For Saturn entering Aquarius? You have the star. So Geminis, you actually are bringing in the energy of Aquarius. Beautiful, considering Saturn is in Aquarius. This is all about hopes, wishes, dreams, goals, networks, and associations. This is about being a star. For many of you Geminis out there, you are the star. You are the person that is getting the attention, getting the accolades, getting the, we want to promote you, getting the, um, figuring out the astrology, okay? Whatever it is, astrology is going to be affecting you significantly. So pay attention to your astrology, all right? This could be looking up at the stars. This could be definitely out of the box thinking for some Geminis. Geminis, I am sensing for many of you, you do have a lot of genius that you are going to have access to once Saturn hits Aquarius. So be aware of that. Aquarius people are going to be very helpful to you. So make friends with the Aquarian peoples and Aquarian peoples probably making friends with the Geminis because together you're an unstoppable pair. All right. So please be aware of this. My mother's an Aquarius. I wonder if we're going to be doing something together <laughs> when Saturn enters Aquarius. All right, Cancers, for you, this will require accountability, out-of-the-box thinking, networking, and control of over-emotionalism regarding a Scorpio person, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, or Jupiter, or Eighth House matters of joint finances, intimacy, jealousy, revenge, and death and rebirth. For health, the Eighth House of Scorpio rules the colon, the rectum, the anus, the genitals, the bladder, nose, sweat glands, and the exc uh, uh, excretory system. All right, Cancers, what is your major arcana energy that Saturn is bringing along with it here when Saturn enters Aquarius? Cutting the deck. Cancers, you have the fool. Cancers, now is the time. Do it. Just do it. All right, Cancers, it's time for you to start a brand new beginning. Let go of the old. Let go of the past. Go into your new beginning with a light heart, a light mind, and no more burdens. Let those burdens go. Drop those burdens. You don't need them anymore. Of course, you have to move forward into your future with awareness, rationality, and some sense of being aware of your surroundings. All right, but this is telling you, Cancers, once Saturn enters Aquarius, it is time for you to, I'm just hearing get out of Dodge. I don't know what that means, but for some of you Cancers out there, it simply means a new beginning awaits you. Universe is just waiting for you to take the reins and go and do it with a light heart and um, just great enthusiasm in your person. All right, so that's what's coming up for the Cancers out there. Leos, for you, this will require accountability, out-of-the-box thinking, networking, and control of over-emotionalism regarding a Libra person, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, or Jupiter, or a seventh house matters of business partnerships, romantic partnerships, and fairness. For health, the seventh house of Libra rules kidneys and ovaries. Leos. So what have we got Cutting the deck. Your major arcana energy that Saturn wants you to be aware of is the Hermit. Your health and your well being are going to be absolutely 100% on the top of your mind, Leos. This also requires you to use wisdom in all of your dealings. You may need to take a step back. You may need to look at things from a detached perspective. 
You need to look at things and you need to research things that you deal with every day. I feel here, Leos, that there are some things going on in your life right now that need to be researched. They need to be looked in a little bit deeper because something's not stirring the Kool-Aid, all right? You, you got to be able to make sure that the words match the actions and the actions match the words. And Leo, this includes you. Walk the talk and talk the walk. Because if you don't, immediate karma is on its way. All right. Leo's, this also means physician energy, uh, medical energy, counseling energy, wise sage energy. This could even be possibly um, a psychic, um, a health practitioner, a counselor, something like that, either for you or for someone around you, maybe somebody that you love, but it is coming up here. This could also be a Virgo person, Leo. So please be aware of that as well. So you've got Libra people and you also have Virgo people that are coming in here. And again, health and well-being and reputation are high aspects or high alert as it relates to Saturn entering Aquarius. Dot your I's and cross your T's, Leo. Make sure that whatever it is that you're saying that you're going to do, you do it. If you don't, immediate, almost immediate karma will result. Okay, good luck. Because the thing about it is, if you use this energy the right way, the karma is positive. If you don't, maybe not so much. Virgo, for you, this will require accountability, out-of-the-box thinking, networking, and control of over-emotionalism regarding another Virgo person. Sun, moon, rising, Venus, or Jupiter. Or six house matters of health, daily duties, and your reputation in the world. For health, the sixth house of Virgo rules liver, pancreas, spleen, and upper intestine. So make sure you're taking care of those areas of your body. And Virgo, what is your energy? What is your major arcana energy as Saturn enters Aquarius? What it is? What it is, Virgo? What it is? This one wants to come out, so I'm not even going to cut the deck. I'm just going to pull it. Virgo. Temperance. So Virgo, for you right now, you have got to find the win-win situation. You have got to make sure that you're treating people fairly. You have got to make sure that you're doing beta tests. All right, Virgo. So what does that mean? It means that you got to test things before you just jump in whole, with both feet. All right. Or head first. Make sure you test things out. Make sure it works. Don't jump into it without check, check, checking, and rechecking. And Virgo, normally you're really good about that, but I'm sensing for some of you, there might be some issues as it relates to you being um, instigated through needing to choose between your reputation and, be and between what you know is right. See, the thing is sometimes, Virgos, is we... We based our reputation or how we are viewed by other people based on how they view us, right? If they like us, we're successful. If they don't like us, we're not successful. That is not always the case, Virgo. So for you right now, you have to be really cautious as it relates to your integrity versus your reputation. What is it worth to you? Are you going to tell the truth or are you going to lie? Very important. Make sure you're paying attention to this. This could also be a Sagittarian person in your life. This could also be, for many of you Virgos out there, traveling a lot when Saturn is entering Aquarius. There is a need for you to put two and two together to create a brand new thing. A little bit of the old, a little bit of the new, Mix them together and something absolutely brand new pops out. That is what's happening here, Virgo. So please be aware of that. Dipping your toe in the water, not going in head first. Please be aware of that, Virgo. Libra, for you, this will require accountability, out-of-the-box thinking, networking, and control of over-emotionalism 
regarding a Leo person, a sun, moon, rising, Venus, or Jupiter, or fifth house matters of romance, children, creativity, and risk-taking. For health, the fifth house rules the heart, the upper back, the spine, and the gallbladder. So Libra, let's see what's going on with you as Saturn enters Aquarius. What is your major arcana energy, Libra? What is it? Cutting the deck. We have the Fool. Libra, it is time for you to take that new beginning. It is time for you to step forward into the future with full awareness, full accountability, and full consciousness as it relates to whatever it is you're heading into. You must dump the past, Libra. Dump it. Stop holding on to it. The more you hold on to it, the more you'll be stuck. Saturn going into Aquarius is saying, Libra, I want you to move forward with a light heart and with a pure intention regarding romance, children, creativity, and risk-taking. Do what you know needs to be done. Stay in your integrity and don't screw it up. That is what Saturn is telling you. Sorry, Libras, I'm channeling Saturn right now. It just is what it is. Um... But that is what's happening here. Saturn is not screwing around Libra. Not screwing around. You want a new beginning? Don't take your past with you or it will sabotage your new beginning. Let it go. Let go of the past relationships that didn't work. Let go of the past issues that caused sleepless nights for you. Let go of your exes. They're exes for a reason. Move into your new beginning into someone and being with someone who not only deserves you, but you deserve them for all the crap that you've been through up to this point. That is your message from Saturn. Wow, that was a little bit strict, but Libra is what it is. Scorpio, for you, this will require accountability, out-of-the-box thinking, networking, and control of over emotionalism regarding a cancer person sun moon rising venus or jupiter or fourth house matters of home and family for health the fourth house of cancer rules chests breasts and stomach so um scorpios please be aware uh get your uh, mammogram if you're a female make sure you're on top of that definitely if you have to get your um, respiratory system checked out, make sure you get that checked out. If you're having stomach problems, make sure you get that checked out as well. So Scorpios, what is your major arcana card as it relates to Saturn moving into an Aquarius? Saturn moving into Aquarius for Scorpios, cutting the deck. Your energy is the Hierophant. So Scorpio, uh, for you, you could, or others around you, could be committing to a union. There could be marriages. There could be uh, loyalties and commitments uh, regarding even a Taurus person, Scorpio. For others of you out there, there is something regarding the home, keys to the home, keys to the family, the family legacy. Scorpio, I don't know what that means, but maybe you're Maybe you are dealing right now with um, a family legacy that you're passing down, you know, uh, through the generations. That could be Scorpios. Uh, for others of you out there, religion is playing a significant role in your life for whatever reason. But also there is something regarding wise, uh, like a wise sage or uh, wisdom or a spiritual leader that is coming in to your life that is going to help you. This is faded. Now, Scorpio, you may be looking for them. You may not be looking for them, but they're coming. So here they are. They're just floating around your periphery right now, but they will make themselves very, very clear very, very soon. Scorpio, it's very important for you to abide by the hierarchy very important for you to play within the guidelines, all right? That is what is happening here, Scorpio. 
Very interesting. All right, Sages, what's going on with you? Another sip of wine. Sages, for you, this will require accountability, out-of-the-box thinking, networking, and control of over-emotionalism regarding a Gemini person. A sun, moon, rising, Venus, or Jupiter? Or a third house matters of contracts, negotiations, siblings, social media, short-distance travels, communications of all kinds, and the neighborhood. For health, the third house of Gemini rules shoulders, arms, hands, fingers, and the respiratory system. All right, Sagittarius, what it is for you, for your major arcana energy, for Saturn entering Aquarius. Sagittarius, what is it for you? What is your major arcana energy? We've had a lot of repeats, guys, so I think Saturn has his eye on certain types of energies here. All right, Sagittarius, I'm cutting the deck. What have we got for you? The moon. So Sagittarians, um, this is a Pisces, Cancer, or Scorpio. So not only do you have dealings with a Gemini person, but you also have Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio that you are dealing with right now as well. It is very important for you, Sagittarius, not to deceive others because you will be called out within minutes, if not days. Uh, Sagittarius, as it relates to the moon, you might be longing for someone. It might be this Gemini, Pisces, Cancer, or Scorpio person. Um, I really feel that, wow, Sagis, I'm getting a very specific message here. You really miss somebody. And you are just waiting for the day for their return. You are waiting for the day for you to be together again. You miss talking with them, you miss holding them, you miss kissing them, you miss what, whatever it is. It, 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 even if it's just hugging a child, you miss them is what I'm getting here. Many of you Sagittarians are going to be going through some sort of, I don't wanna say it's dark night of the soul, but it's close, okay? Now, other thing that you need to know, Sagittarius, is that full moons and new moons are going to affect you greatly. So please pay attention to uh, the new moons and the full moons the whole time that Saturn is in Aquarius because it will reveal either deception or truth. So follow your astrology and make sure you're paying attention to where, what house it is in for you and uh, where it is as far as what sign it's in. Because there's some significant Sagittarius for you right now. The new moons and the full moons are going to be so impactful it might even make your head spin. Really figure out your astrology here. What house is the new moon in? What house is the full moon in? Throughout the whole time that Saturn is in Aquarius. What sign is the full moon in? What sign is the new moon in? Pay attention to that. You have a lot of subconscious, unconscious healing that is coming up to the surface. And this is going to require you to be accountable. This is going to require you to be in charge of your emotions as well, Sagis. So just be aware of that. All right, guys, let's see here. I think that that is just about it. And I truly hope that you appreciated this video. And I hope that it helps you. Again, please remember there are times where I will allow myself to channel the planets, they can be extremely stringent, especially when we have the beautiful planet of Saturn, the planet of diligence, loyalty, restriction, depression, building, 
all of that, hierarchies, career, climbing up the ladder of whatever it is that you want to try to accomplish in your life, that is the energy of Saturn. Saturn is not a bad planet. Saturn is a planet of what you give, you will receive. So please be aware of the intense energy that Saturn is going to elicit once he enters Aquarius, which is another of the signs that he rules. All right. So thank you, all of you out there. I hope you liked this uh, fireside chat with a glass of New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. And um, we will catch you later. And I will be posting more videos quite soon. Much light, much love, and many blessings. Namaste.